السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Yesterday was a little bit lengthy topic Today is actually a nice and short one Anas bin Malik رضي الله عن He says that he was walking with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه برد النجراني And he had a shawl A najrani shawl on his, uh, around his neck. Najran is a region, uh, we could say, close to modern day Yemen. Okay. So that's where the shawl was from. فَأَدْرَكَهُ عَرَابِيٌ A Bedouin came and he grabbed onto the shawl فَجَذَبَهُ جَذْبَةً شَدِيدًا And he pulled it, he yanked it. Yanked it would be the right word to use. Like he yanked it off of, you know, off of his neck. حتى نظرت إلى صفحة عاتق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد أثرت به حاشة الرداء من شدة جذبته. That because he yanked it so hard, Anas bin Malik رضي الله عنه says that I saw the shawls, you know, the border, leaving a mark on the neck, the beloved neck of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم due to how hard he pulled it. Then the Arabi he says, you know. He, he asks the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Give me something from the wealth of Allah which is in your possession. So at first he yanked the shawl off of him, and then he's asking him for something. I'll finish the narration, then we'll talk about it a little bit. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ, he turns towards him, and the narration says, فَضَحِكَ uh, And he laughed, or he smiled. The Prophet ﷺ is smiling. And then ordered that the Bedouin be given something. This hadith is in Sahih al-Muslim. ثُمَّ أَمَرَ لَهُ Subhanallah. Think of yourself walking down the street or on a busy, busy sidewalk and someone you know, bumps their shoulder into you. you know? Or you're, in, you're driving in the car and someone is in a little bit of a hurry and he cuts you off and then goes, takes the exit. You know? so like, you know, I'm going to follow this guy to the end of the earth and see where he's going and then, you know? Subhanallah. I think it was just like yesterday or day before. I seen a video where this one, there was this one like a small car, and then there was like a pickup truck. The pickup truck was trying to get ahead, but the small car kept messing with the pickup truck, until finally the pickup truck had enough, and then he went beside him, and he went into the opposite oncoming traffic, and then he cut him off, and then they come to the traffic light, and he gets out, and the guy's windows open, he just starts punching him, and then they both come out, grown men fighting in the middle of the street. You know, they both come out and they're going at it and one guy gets knocked on the ground and the traffic light turns green, they both jump in the cars and keep going. You know, and subhanAllah, we see many, many times people actually even get shot or you know, lots of property is damaged and different things just from a little bit of anger. But subhanAllah, we see the Prophet in every situation, he kept his calm. Anger is from shaitan. And this is what we have to remind ourselves. That when our ego gets too high or something comes towards us, right away we have to remind ourselves this is from shaitan. I can't remember the exact words of the narration, but there's a narration that says that you know anything that's done in a hurry, it's from shaitan, and whatever is calm, you know, it's from Allah. Or whatever is done slowly and calmly. And if we think about it, what is what is our religion, or what does the deen teach us? That whenever we're going to do something, first think. Whenever we're going to say something, first think. You know, who, who was the sah- Sahabi? I believe it was Abu Bakr or one of the, one of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. He would keep a small pebble under his tongue. So whenever he was going to speak, the tongue would hit the pebble first. And it's like a bell that reminds him. Am I going to say something good right now or am I going to say something bad? Because our habit is that, you know, we speak first, think later. But once it's done, it's done. Then it's too late. The Prophet ﷺ, he could have said something right then. And, you know, the Bedouin could have been turned off by that and, you know, maybe went away from the deen. And many times, even our approach for teaching deen, this is actually a vast topic and I'm just shooting different things, you know, from, from each topic. But one of our approaches of teaching deen is usually very harsh and abrupt. And because of that, instead of people learning the deen, they go away from the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and make us from amongst those who preach the deen properly and make us not from amongst those 
who make people go away from the deen because this is very scary. On the day of Qiyamah, a person comes and says, you know, oh Allah, I, w I want to do, read Quran, but this teacher was you know, beating me so bad, I, I could not, I, I lost the love of the Quran in my heart. What can I do? That teacher is going to be born on the day of Qiyamah, La Dhulm al -yawm. he's going he's to have to answer. And we know what happens back home, subhanAllah, the stories, many, I'm sure many of us have even witnessed those ourselves. I remember my uncle would always tell me, like one time he was in class, and you know, the teacher took the child's hand and put it in the drawer and went to close the door. The, the close, my, my uncle was like, heck no, I'm not putting my hand in there. He pulled his hand out and he's like, <laughs> is this a way to teach the Quran? The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So anyways, this is a vast topic. But what we see is the reaction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The first reaction is a welcoming, loving, compassionate reaction. Smiled, laughed. And then he says, you know, give him what he wants. He doesn't know better. That's the way to teach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to teach the way deen is supposed to be taught and also react and deal with everyone the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. If we do, if we do this, we can become the best of people. And the best, with the people with the best character on the day of Qiyamah or in, in Jannah, they are rewarded the highest level, the house in the highest level of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those. Wa akhir da'wah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma anta salamu minka salamu tabarakta adal jalali wal ikram. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar. Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. Allahumma ajirna min khizid dunya wa adab al-akhirah. اللهم قنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك وغضبك والنار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اهد الناس والجنة جميعا اللهم أجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب